Saying a chakra is blocked or imbalanced really means that Kundalini Shakti, that serpent, can't effectively move through that chakra. Welcome, I'm Brett Larkin. I lead 200 and 300 hour highly interactive yoga teacher training programs that you can complete online. And I'm the founder of Uplifted Yoga, which is a community for committed yoga practitioners with a consistent practice or who desire a consistent practice. Now, if you're watching this, you, guess what, have a physical body. But if you're interested in yoga, it's likely that you understand that you also have an energetic body. And I always like to talk about acupuncture when I first describe or introduce people to the energetic body because a lot of people are familiar with it. So in acupuncture, they use meridians to map the energetic body. And the word that they use for the energy that moves in our body is chi. In the system of yoga, we instead call these channels of energy in the body a different word. Instead of meridians, we call them nadis. So think of all the nadis or all the energy pathways in your body as the little streets, the roads, the towns that then converge into a few major cities. These big cities or hubs of energy are called the chakras. And the Sanskrit word for chakra translates to wheel or disc. And that's because these energy centers are not stagnant. They are moving. Think of each chakra as a spinning vortex of prana, the Sanskrit word for energy, located at different sections along your spine. The chakras begin at the base of your spine, below the pelvic region. And some say that the first chakra is only partially in the body, that it actually extends down into the ground, providing a spiritual connection with the earth. Now, the chakras move up the spine from there all the way up and out the top of your head. And some say that that seventh chakra actually extends beyond the head, connecting to the sky and to universal intelligence, source energy, God, whatever you choose to call that. So each of the seven chakras along the spine has its own name, and color and associated stones and crystals, an energetic realm that it rules. The root chakra is located at the base of the spine, so the area around your tailbone. And if we think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the root chakra represents our most basic means of survival, food, shelter, uh, money, but also how safe and secure we feel. Right? Many of us have a roof over our head, but still struggle in this area because we're stressed out. We never really feel fully grounded or present or able to relax. So this energy center is all about taking care of yourself and getting those basic needs met. The sacral chakra is located in the pelvis, below the navel, and governs the realm of well-being, pleasure, creativity, sexuality. The sacral chakra is all about how well we handle new experiences as well. And many say our emotions live here. So this energy center is all about how much are you willing to feel? What are your desires? How do you feel about what's going on in your life? The solar plexus is located at the navel. It governs self-worth, self-confidence, and self-esteem. When your third chakra is in balance, you have a strong will. You get things done. But if you're overactive in this area, you're a workaholic who doesn't know how to relax. If you're deficient, meaning you don't have enough energy in your third chakra, you're procrastinating, right? That's what that looks like. You're not getting things done. So we'll talk more about how to balance these energy centers a little bit later. Let's keep going and talk about the heart chakra. It's located, unsurprisingly, at the heart center. It's known as the fulcrum chakra because it's right at the center of the chakra system. Three chakras below, three chakras above. 
and it governs our relationship with ourselves and others, as well as how well we're just able to feel joy and embrace being present in our own skin. The throat chakra at our throat, again, unsurprisingly, controls our ability to communicate. So this area is all about self-expression and bringing our ideas out into the world. Now the third eye chakra you may have heard of before. It's located between and above your eyebrows at the pineal and pituitary glands. And it governs our intuition, imagination, wisdom, and ability to think and make decisions. When the third eye chakra is balanced, we're able to see the big picture of what really matters in our life. When this energy center is deficient, however, we're narrow-minded, right? We miss opportunities. We're stuck in old habits and stuck thinking the same thoughts over and over and over again. The crown chakra, the highest chakra, represents our ability to be fully connected to source, to the universe, to God. It's about how interconnected we feel. And you've likely experienced this energy center at the end of a great yoga class when you're lying in Shavasana, right? You feel blissful. Whatever problems you entered the yoga room with have hopefully become smaller. Now that we know the seven chakras form a vertical column from the bottom of the pelvis up through the crown of the head, what is Kundalini? And how does it play into all of this? Kundalini explains how these energy centers are spinning or moving. The two currents of energy moving up and down your spinal column along the chakras are the current of liberation and the current of manifestation. So think of the downward and upward current that I'm talking about here as what makes the chakras spin. Now what's called Kundalini Yoga focuses very much on that upward current, moving energy up the chakras, so to that seventh highest chakra so that we can connect with universal intelligence. Now Hatha or Vinyasa style yoga traditionally focuses on both, right? Both lifting energy up, but also grounding energy down. We cover that in depth in my online programs, that both of these currents are super important. We don't want to overemphasize just one or the other. A strong, liberating upward current without manifestation might express itself as someone who's great with ideas, but is unable to bring anything into fruition. The inverse, someone who has a strong current of manifestation without liberation, might be someone who like accomplishes a ton, but you can tell that they're sort of on autopilot. They're disconnected with their true purpose. Here's what's confusing. Kundalini and Shakti are two words that are used interchangeably to represent your liberating current that describe the ascension, ascension of energy up through the chakras. And it's often drawn as a snake coiled three and a half times around the base of your spine. So in daily life, this serpent, the Kundalini serpent is usually dormant, right? In your daily life, you're like doing jobs, you're completing errands, you're getting stuff done. When you do kundalini yoga or choose to meditate, the idea from the ancient yogic texts is that you're waking up that serpent and moving it from being coiled just at the base of the spine, you're moving it up through all the chakras, through what's called shashumna nadi. Kundalini energy or kundalini shakti, as it's often called, ascends through the chakras and finally reaches the crown chakra at the top of the head. There, she waits, according to many uh, yogic texts and philosophy, to find Shiva, who represents uh, divine consciousness or enlightenment or bliss. Shiva descends to meet her. So when Shiva and Shakti are united together, that's when you be begin to feel connected to something bigger than yourself, right? That's the great feeling that yoga and meditation give you. Now. I'm just scratching the surface here to make these concepts approachable for beginners. So I'm also simplifying some of these things. 
but these are the basics and it's so fun, right? There's so much more to learn, which is why I'm going to invite you to pursue either 200 or 300 hour yoga teacher training with me online to deepen your practice or to set yourself up with a career teaching yoga. And you can do these programs, again, completely online. Or as a first step, you know, just get to know me better and the community better and join my free seven day chakra yoga challenge, which is the most popular program inside my uplifted yoga membership for committed yogis with a consistent practice or who wanna have a consistent practice. And you can get that seven day chakra challenge that's usually just in the membership here free for a limited time. It includes a yoga class and a meditation from me on each chakra. So you can really begin to experience these energy centers for yourself to feel them based on what I described. So let me know what, based on like what you learned in this video, right? Whether you feel your chakras are blocked or out of balance, and if so, which one? So let me know, chakra, uh, you know, root, sacral, heart. I'm really curious to hear from you in the comments, and don't forget to sign up for my free seven-day chakra challenge. I'll make sure to put the link uh, below this video, and I'm sending you so much love. From my heart to yours, namaste.